If you use an Apple Watch, I'm sure you can relate to the wish and desire for the Apple Watch's battery life to be just a little bit better, especially after a long day where you need the Apple Watch to last just a little longer. With the new feature hidden in Watch OS 9, you can actually extend the Apple Watch's battery life to maybe even a couple of days? I'm Jason Cipriani, and in this ZDNet video, I'm going to show you how to use low power mode in Watch OS 9 on your Apple Watch. When Apple released iOS 16 and Apple Watch OS 9 back in September, it, each update brought its respective share of upgrades and new features to either platform. For example, the iPhone got a new Photoshop feature, Photoshop-like feature for the Photos app that makes you or allows you to lift objects off the background and share them and create your own stickers. Or there's new features in iMessage that allow you to undo send or delete a message that you sent to the wrong person. You could even edit messages within the first 15 minutes of sending them. The Apple Watch got new features such as enhanced fitness tracking and workout tracking. And then there's low power mode. And if you have an iPhone and you've had one for a while, you're 100% familiar with low power mode on iPhone in that it disables a couple key features and extends the battery life on your smartphone for however long you need it until you can get to a charger and plug it in. But on an iPhone, it's not as important as it is on an Apple Watch, which has a battery life that, let's be honest, as far as smartwatches go, could be a lot better. So with low power mode in watchOS 9, you're gonna lose out on some features when it's enabled, but you're not gonna lose out on everything. In, in actuality, it might be better off just to use low power mode all the time. So according to Apple, what you will lose when you enable low power mode on your Apple Watch is if it hasn't always on display, that will be disabled. Heart rate notifications for irregular rhythm, high heart rate and low heart rate will also be turned off. Background heart rate measurements will stop as long as low power mode is enabled. Background blood oxygen measurements will also be stopped during low power mode. And then let's uh, not forget that if you start walking and you get a start workout reminder or riding a bike, that feature, the start workout reminder feature, will stop working again as long as low power mode is enabled. That's not everything though. If you have low power mode turned on, and you walk away from your iPhone, low power mode will disable Wi-Fi and cellular connectivity until you either open an app and demand data for maybe checking the weather or sending a message, an iMessage, um, or until you get nearby your iPhone once again. But to be clear, you're not completely cut off here from the outside world. If you have a cellular Apple Watch, for example, and low power mode is enabled, as soon as you wake the watch and go into an app, the connection is restored, you're able to communicate with someone, call for help, check the weather, uh, check your email, or even just, you know, whatever else it is you want to do on your cellular Apple Watch. So another thing is low power mode will periodically check for notifications and incoming phone calls and alerts. You won't receive them in real time, so it'll be However long low power mode determines in between updates, you may see you know, five or six messages or notifications come through at one time. And that is just something that is used to limit the draw on battery. What about tracking a workout in low power mode? You actually don't lose out on anything and it's actually pretty cool. You can trigger low power mode automatically when a workout is started by going into the settings app and, and turning it on there. Uh, you'll have to do that directly on your Apple Watch, but you don't lose out on GPS, you don't lose out on heart rate tracking or anything else. And it it's pretty cool that it actually extends the battery life while you're working out without you missing out on any of the key health metrics. The one downside to using low power mode is there's not a blanket amount of increased battery life that you're gonna get by turning it on. I can't say, if you turn on low power mode with 50% left on your Apple Watch Ultra, your, your Ultra's battery is going to last two more days. It all depends on how you use your watch, whether or not you work out, how often you're waking it to check for notifications, if you're going into any apps, so on and so forth. 
but I can tell you that I have seen a drastic improvement in the Apple Watch Ultra's already great battery life when I've enabled low power mode just to test it for fun, not even because I needed to. And I'm not talking a couple extra hours, I'm talking 12, 20, maybe even 24 extra hours of battery life just by using low power mode. Your mileage will vary, don't get me wrong, but it is a feature that if you know you're gonna be out and doing a lot for a day and you wanna make sure your Apple Watch gets through that, or you see towards the end of the day it's running low, you can flip it on and extend the battery life without really missing out on a whole lot of the key features. All right, so we know what it does, we know what it doesn't, and we know what your Apple Watch behavior will be like when it's on, but how do you turn it on? There's a couple different ways. At 10% battery life on your watch, you'll get an alert asking if you want to enable low power mode. You could turn it on and it'll continue to go until your battery either dies or when you start charging your watch and it hits 80%, low power mode automatically turns itself off. If you want to manually enable it at 50%, 40%, whatever it is, what you'll need to do is swipe up from the bottom of your watch face, tap on the battery percentage on your watch, and then at the bottom of that is a low power mode option. You'll tap on the switch to turn it on, which brings up another screen. In that screen, you see exactly what is gonna happen once you enable low power mode. Scroll all the way to the bottom. You have a few different options here. There's turn on, turn on for, and dismiss. If you hit turn on, it immediately enables it and will stay enabled until you charge your watch again and it hits that 80% threshold. If you use turn on four, you're presented with options of on for one day, on for two days, on for three days. This is helpful if you know you're gonna be traveling quite a bit and let's say you forgot your charger. I've done it. Uh, I just went without a watch for the last couple of days of my trip, but if I left and was going on a four day trip and realized I didn't bring my charger, I definitely would enable three day uh, low power mode and I more than likely would be able to get through the rest of the trip, again, depending on how and how I used it in, in the various use cases there. So how do you know low power mode is enabled? There's actually a couple different ways. The easiest way is to wake your watch and look at the top. And you can see at the top here, there is a yellow circle that shows up. That is the low power mode indicator for the Apple Watch. So you can quickly glance and see when that shows up and you know low power mode is enabled. If you swipe up from the bottom of the screen to control center, the battery percentage here is now yellow. And if you were to plug in or connect the Apple Watch to a charger, there's usually a red uh, charging indicator if it's under 20% or 10%, I don't remember the exact percentage, or a green charging indicator uh, circle on the watch's display to let you know where it's at. If low power mode is enabled, that turns yellow until it hits that 80% threshold. Hopefully you learned something here today. Uh, low power mode on the Apple Watch and watchOS 9 is going to be a great feature and one I know I've already used quite a bit and I will continue to use quite a bit into the future. Once again, I'm Jason Cipriani. Thanks for watching this ZDNet video. Make sure to check out more tech tips just like this one, as well as the latest tech news at ZDNet.com.